All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about solving of the group, since that's, you know, solving and post-processing are what it's best at. So we'll jump in here, pull up model A, we'll get our EDAC stack back. So groups can be used to, to model individual components, right? So we have this huge assembly box. We've got, you know, constraints all along these areas here. Let's say we're only, we want to see what the, the natural frequencies are for the solids. Like just if we just had only slice two. So we could delete everything, you know, go ahead and isolate that or export it in a group. There's a bunch of things we can do, but what's really nice is you can come in here to analysis. So let's make one, start a new analysis. Let's just go ahead and do normal modes eigenvalue. And if you cycle through to this portion here, the bulk data, it has portion of model to right. So it's defaults to entire model. But what you can do is come in here and it actually shows you all your groups. So if we go to S2, click OK. Let's take a look at our boundary conditions. We've got our fixed boundary conditions. We're only looking at slice two. So now when we come in, analyze it should just analyze you know, just look at slice two so that run quick so pull up our results first thing i notice e to the negative four something's flying so that to me is that's always shows pretty much rigid body motion so what's going on right we had our we had our constraints we had our model maybe something's flying around let's take a look when you look the whole thing's flying right doesn't make sense. We have in our in our manager, we have that the boundary conditions should be there. But what you remember, we're only analyzing what's in group two. So let's go ahead and take a look. What is in group two? Again, use selector. Take a look. Come down to our selector list. If you'll notice, there are no constraints. So it's only going to be able to look at what you have in your group. So it's even though we're calling out that constraint, it doesn't exist. Our model's flying away. So you can come up here now. Let's do, we have our, our group activated. So we can go group, constraint, the constraint was nodal. I'm just gonna select all, pull everything in. It's only gonna care about what's on this group. So let's try that again. And again, we can just, just to make sure we can load our group up again. Oops, sorry. Just to say, and again, we have nodal constraints. So let's roll those results. And take a look. All right, things are looking better. 55. That's that's more in line with what, what I would expect. We come here. Look at that. See that it's only analyzed that. So it's a nice way to just take a look if you have a huge assembly and say maybe you want to look at a small feature. You can do that. Um, another handy feature, which I will just kind of show you here, is if you cycle through to output requests, you can request to output results for just groups. And this can be really helpful if you have a massive model, um, like I was using you know, a PSD with 900 modes and it was generating and causing a ton of data as it tried to generate results. And I only cared about, you know, the piece, let's say the PCBs in this case. So you could, you know, displace in the PCBs. You can come in here and choose, create a group, say, I only want results on that, ignore everything else, and it'll help sometimes with solves. And it's just kind of like a nice way to isolate stuff. So that's also an option when it comes to, to solving, which helps. All right, let's go on to uh, post-processing here. A lot you can do with that. So let's say we have a model here, just a 10G X direction load on this guy. So let's say you want to look at this model and you don't care about these elements that are right up on these bridges. Because, uh, you know, those are erroneous. They're, you know, that's gonna, and it's an infinitely rigid uh, element, so those stress results aren't realistic and we want to hide them. So we can use the draw erase toolbar for this if we just want to make a quick group. So let's do this, let's say, come in here, we can go model type, let's quickly turn off everything except for our rigids. We can use draw erase toolbar, grab all those guys. Draw erase toolbar is a really cool feature for elements, which is this grow feature. So if I click this, it's gonna just grow elements out. Right now, nothing's shown because we're not highlighting it. But if we look, it just grows one element out. 
So that's real handy. But the thing is, we don't want to see those results. Again, we want to see the results on everything else. So let's go ahead and reverse these. And we'll create a group. And let's just add that to this group, which is now untitled. So now you have the option, if you go into the post processing here, processing here under toolbars, you have the option to uh, show on groups. So there's full model visible groups, which is usually the default, active groups, so you can cycle through things, or you can pick an individual one. So if we go here, zoom in, it shows only results on the, on the areas that we care about. So we've hidden effectively those ones in here, and we can take a look at the items elsewhere. So it's a really nice way you can go through and say, oh, I just want to see results here, and, it, and it'll do that for you. Um, another thing, which is nice, because it, it'll cap the top for you, is if you, if you just want to see groups, it'll show you, you know, that's the highest in that slice, and you can kind of go through individually and look at stuff. So there's a lot of different ways. If you've had your group set up correctly, that you can cycle through things quickly uh, and see, you know, what's going on. Another thing you can do is actually generate groups uh, based off of, like, a, a, a criteria. So the way you would do that, is you would go group operations generate with output. So this comes up here. It's going to ask you uh, what output set do you want? We only have one, so let's choose that. It'll bring up this dialog box. And so what this lets you do is come in here and choose your output uh, that you want to show. So let's say plate bottom on Mises stress. Let's say we want to do over 10,000. And we'll add that criteria. And we also want solid stress. I believe it's up here. Solid von Mises stress. And we'll also want that to be over 1,000. So let's add that criteria. Click OK. So it generates a group down here. Now when we show active, just shows these groups, which is real handy. Um, and one thing I wanted to see is if you can actually come in here to your feature line. No, no I wasn't sure about that. Anyway, so yeah, so you can come in and it lets you do show these things, and then you can go, you know, show full model. Maybe we want to come in here and just show, you know, those uh, those elements, uh, or vice versa. So it's a good way to like isolate where elements are. You can set criteria and quickly go through your model and find what stress levels you want, where they are, without having to like explore an entire model. So there's a lot of power in doing that. Um, you can also, just if you're going to generate group element ID, there's this pick method by output. does the exact same thing as what we were showing earlier. So bring up the same dialog box, and you can do it from there as well. So a lot of power on how you show results on your model. And again, showing you if, you if you take the time in the beginning to set up your layers and your groups correctly, when you're post-processing, things are a lot easier. Um, and, and it can just, it's a real good way to show things uh, and uh, isolate from there. So it pretty much covers my general overview of uh, groups and layers.